Hello, this is Tony Hart from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, 30 Years of Junk Climate Science. 30 years ago, NASA's James Hansen testified before Congress on a very hot day in June and told him that the world was doomed due to global warming. His testimony was arranged by Senator Tim Wirth of Colorado. Let's look how Tim Wirth recalled it a few years later. We called the Weather Bureau and found out what historically was the hottest day of the summer. Well, it was June 6th or June 9th or whatever it was, so we scheduled the hearing that day. And bingo, it was the hottest day on record in Washington or close to it. It was stiflingly hot that summer. At the same time, you had this drought all across the country, so the linkage between the Hanson hearing and the drought became very intense. What we did was went in the night before and opened up all the windows, I'll admit, right? So that the air conditioning wasn't working inside the room and so when the hearing occurred there was not only bliss, which is television cameras and double figures, but it was really hot. So Hanson's giving this testimony. You've got these television cameras back there heating up the room and the air conditioning in the room didn't appear to work. So it was sort of a perfect collection of events that happened that day with the wonderful Jim Hanson who was wiping his brow at the witness table and giving this remarkable testimony. Testimony. So the global warming scam started out as a genuine scam. It's always hot in Washington in the summer. So they sabotaged the air conditioning and picked the hottest day of the summer to fool people in the room into thinking it was due to global warming. 1988 was a very hot year and the country was experiencing a very severe drought. The Mississippi River nearly dried up that summer. Commerce became impossible up, up many sections of the Mississippi River and Yellowstone National Park burned up that summer. So it wasn't hard for people to get sucked into this story. Now let's look at some of the specific predictions government scientists were making during that very hot dry summer of 1988. Noah said the current drought is an example of the kind of drought that will occur more frequently as global warming becomes larger. Computer models predict more frequent droughts in the American Midwest and Southeast. Temperature increases in the high latitudes could more than double. This could mean growing cotton in Siberia and oranges in British Columbia. Hansen earlier had published predictions of what would, this would mean for several cities in terms of the typical number of days per year with temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Washington would have 1,200 degree days instead of 1. Dallas would have 78 instead of 19. Memphis would have 4,200 degree days instead of 4. And Chicago would have 600 degree days instead of none. Let's look first at the predictions of increasing drought in the Corn Belt. This is the official NOAA drought graph going back to 1895. Green represents wet, orange represents drought. You can see that the last really bad drought occurred right around the time when Hansen gave his testimony in 1988, and there haven't been any droughts in the Corn Belt since 1990. The trend has been less and less drought over time. So they got their predictions exactly backwards. Now let's look at Hansen's predictions of increasing 100 degree days in four U.S. cities. This is the graph from Lincoln, Virginia from the United States Historical Climatology Network. It's their closest station in Virginia to Washington, D.C. You can see that the exact opposite of what Hansen predicted has occurred. They had their peak number of 100 degree days in 1930 and it's been declining ever since. So Hansen got that city exactly backwards. And if we look at the number of 90 degree days in the Washington DC area, it's even worse. They peaked in 1911 and since the 1930s the frequency of 90 degree days is down more than 60% in the Washington DC area. Same story in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Weather for Texas is the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Fort Worth, and it shows the same trend that there's been a big decrease in the number of 100 degree days over the last 60 to 70 years, and they peaked in 1980. So Hansen got Dallas exactly wrong too. What about Chicago? The closest station to Chicago is located in Aurora, Illinois. Their number of 100 degree days peaked in 1936 and they almost never have them anymore. And for Memphis, the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station is located at Covington and they show exactly the same pattern. Over the last 90 years, the number of 100 degree days has plummeted and they almost never occur anymore. So Hansen got exactly zero out of four right. The frequency of 100 degree days across the country has dropped dramatically. 
Now let's look at their predictions of growing cotton in Siberia. Siberia is currently experiencing the coldest weather ever recorded outside of Antarctica. They got down below minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit the other day. It's difficult to imagine how the scientists could have possibly gotten that prediction any worse. And what about British Columbia? Last winter, British Columbia had their longest cold snap in over 30 years. That doesn't sound very conducive to growing oranges. So now let's go back and review what occurred 30 years ago. They had picked the hottest day of the summer and sabotaged the air conditioning in order to fool people into thinking it had something to do with global warming. The whole thing started as a scam and it's still a scam today. And every single prediction they made 30 years ago was the exact opposite of what actually happened. Despite decade after decade of failed projections, lies, and ongoing fraud by climate scientists, the press continues to parrot their ridiculous claims. The whole thing would be rather comedic like a Monty Python skit if they also weren't talking about doing things like shutting down our essential energy supply which we need to keep warm and doing things like spraying pollutants into the atmosphere to make the record cold in Siberia even colder. The people behind the global warming scam are not good people. They don't care about the planet and they don't care about you. It's time to shut this scam down. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.